Hello, friends. We're still good. We're still getting everybody uh, online here. Hello, Facebook people. Looks like looks like you won the connectivity race. Up oh, there, we're good. Now we have YouTube as well. <laughs> Happy Saturday morning to you. May sixteenth on our on our collective acceleration ramp in the worldwide economy. <laughs> Well, good. Hi, David. I'll do something. I think this will be, no, this for sure will be a very short broadcast. Um, I have a, an unusual opportunity, to, uh, an opportunity to do something very unusual. It's a better way to put it. I, I'm commissioned to do uh, a wedding painting from a photograph. And um, as as are all of my, what, no, most of my wedding paintings, they're, they're actually figurative paintings where I have full figure, bride and groom, in a context, in an environment. This particular painting, and it's going to be, uh, when it's finished, it's going to be uh, 18 by 24, so, you know, fairly good size. Um, so it's actually a figurative painting, if you will, because the, the figures are going to be fairly large. And let me zoom in here real quick so you can see the photograph. This, it so happens, this is kind of fun. Um, I was, I wasn't there as, as in at the hospital, <laughs> but I was there when this girl was born. Uh, and she's now been married 20 years, so <laughs> it gives you some idea <laughs> how long ago that was. Um, our good friends Doug and Donna. I'll just leave it at that. And they're, this is their daughter Darcy. And so, my old friends Doug and Donna are hiring me to do a, this painting of their daughter for her 20th anniversary. Just to help you. All right. Now you can see that the the report. Hello, Uncle Sixty and Jane. Um, the report from my friends is this was the favorite photograph from the wedding. Okay, so it's obviously very candid, very energetic, not at all what, not at all what you would think of as a professional wedding portrait. It looks to me like a snapshot, but maybe the, maybe the hired, maybe the professional photographer did take it, be that as it may. Um, you can see that it's captured Darcy uh, in, in a very energetic move. And even though I know that probably in the in the late late stages of this painting I'm going to use a number of photomechanical tricks to make sure I've got all her dimensions right I thought well it'd be kind of fun here to to start this piece the opposite end of the spectrum not with any photomechanical tricks but in fact with uh, employing if you will, what I, what I know about anatomy. All right, so this is going to be an anatomy lesson. I haven't done one of those in, in forever. Let's start with just a, a, I'm deciding whether to, let's just start with a wild and crazy gesture drawing. Now, let me see. Wow, this leg comes forward. I just want to get the feel for her movement and her right leg bearing the weight goes more or less straight down. This looks like nothing right now, I know, of course. That's, that's, I'm, just, I'm just using this, and I'm going to erase this in a minute because I don't want to waste that much paper. I'm working, by the way, in my current, in my current uh, anatomy sketchbook. Maybe I won't erase this. Who knows? We'll see. I probably I should probably leave it for. All right, and her sh her shoulders are turned and hunched. Her jaw is dropped. Her head is tilted forward. And like every every <laughs> every part of her physique is twisted. <laughs> All right, let me then walk through how I might. Okay, are her shoulders in a 
I'm trying to sit, is our shoulders going this way or this way? Or are they straight across from our, and they're almost straight. It's the only thing that's straight on our whole body is we're looking at our shoulders more or less straight on. Okay. I'm going to just, I'm going to draw and then, and then, um, describe what I'm drawing after I've drawn it. So, okay, then there's a big twist in her torso and her hips are, again, are they, are they, I think slightly tilted. This upper arm is almost a vertical. Uh, this leg comes forward and her toe, her foot is pointed away from us. We can't see anything of her right leg, but we, well, we can see the tip of the toe of her of her right foot, but be that as it may, we know where her, this leg is. Okay, let's see now. Okay, we can modify that a little bit. Okay, let me describe a little bit before, I, before I, I'm going to draw this something and then erase it. Um, this comes out of George Bridgman. At least he's maybe one of the classic. Oh, where is it? Here, I've got it right here. It's broken, but bear with me just a minute. This is one of my <laughs> anatomical models. And again, broken. I need to, I need to refix it. But this, this right here, I guess you could go get that way. This is George Bridgman. I made this out of Sculpey and soldering wire. Now the legs, the kids have been playing with it, so the legs are all crazy, all right? But I'll describe this in just a moment. George Bridgman, page one of any of his books, he says the human Physique, reduced to its absolute most simple, consists of three blocks, head, chest, rib cage, torso, and hips. These blocks do not morph. They do not change shape unless the person's been run over by a truck. These don't change shape. Everything in between them is twistable, stretchable, bendable. But these three units do not change. So that's what they look like from the front. If we were to take this person, this, by the way, this is, this is, this is anatomy drawing 101. This is absolutely first page, first, first hour. Hello, Patsy. Good to have you here. This is my, you know, first, first uh, 20 minutes of, of an anatomy class. Turn to the side. The head is still essentially a rectangle, but now the, the rib cage torso, uh, has become a vertical, uh, rectangle and the hips have become a square. So you understand this is turned to the side that way. Hang on, let me, my reference is falling down. All right, I'm going to erase this probably. Uh, so if we combine these two, then let's see, I'm going to have this, this person, we'll, we'll be looking down on them to somewhat. Uh, what I want to illustrate for you, first of all, is you, you must be able to visualize and, and draw. If you can visualize it, you can draw it. If you can draw it, you can visualize it. You must be able to draw three-dimensional space, three-dimensional shapes. That is to say, the impression, the intuition, the suggestion of three-dimensionality on a two-dimensional surface. I remember many years ago, I was, I was teaching something, I was teaching a painting class 
and the, I think this figure came up, and I said to the room full of students, I said, okay, now draw a cube. It was a seminal moment in my teaching career. I'm sure you can't see my face, hang on. I said, draw a cube, and the class looked at me like this. I didn't realize that a vast percentage of the population evidently and this you know we're we're <laughs> we're all us this might come as a surprise to you but i have been dan nelson my entire life i can remember being four years old and i was me <laughs> being silly but we're so much us that we sometimes have a hard time connecting relating to other people that are so much not us so that was one of my moments i i was like wait a minute you can't draw a cube and they went okay okay so whoo wow whoo <laughs> they were in a painting class okay and that may be you as well but I'm not gonna teach you how to draw a cube I'm just gonna tell you in order in order to draw don't even think dream about drawing a, a fig, human figure if you can't draw a cube anyway all right that was a little more than you needed but there there it was now I'm wondering now if I should keep this page for future instruction because I don't want to go through let me just say this if I had time over the next 30 minutes we would take time to morph refine this block and this block and this block and in fact oh I know I know I've already done that on YouTube hang up <laughs> quote unquote and go to Dan Nelson which is where you are already and click on my playlist and one of the playlists there is an called anatomy masters and if you want to know how to do this then watch i've already got that i've already got that whole thing recorded all right now yeah i think i do want to i think i do i don't need to i don't need to keep this stuff um i'm using a, a, an eraser bag sometimes called a dry eraser just, just to get started here, I'll use a, a kneaded eraser to, to get the rest of it off as I need to. But all right. Um, so there are, in a, in a sense, there are two ways for me, for me to begin uh, drawing a lovely Darcy and her, and her crazy, crazy, crazy pose. One is to just start drawing, as I am now doing and trying to capture the essence. This is kind of a combination between, what I'm doing right now is sort of a combination between a gesture drawing and a, I'll call this a structural drawing, okay? But here's a point I wanna make in just a second. If, if, okay, this leg comes not quite so far away. If at any point I find myself stuck in my attempt to draw Darcy in this, frankly, contorted pose. <laughs> it's cute, but it's contorted, right? If I find myself stuck, unable to capture, get, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting the anatomy right, then, then I'll go work backwards, 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 getting more and more primitive, simple, objective, blocky until I've got it. In other words, I will do this kind of stuff if I need to. Now, I don't think I need to. I'm thinking, I am thinking. Her head is tilted down slightly. I've got her head too high. There we go. Her shoulders are going up. All right, now, now it's become such a mess that um, I would need to graduate to some other, let me see if this pen works, some other medium. So I have here a fountain pen. And uh, as I said, let's, let's see if it's, I haven't used it today, so I don't know if it actually will function. But let, let's begin. Okay, no, and I, you know, I'm seeing things like deltoid, uh, triceps, biceps, uh, 
the muscles in her forearm because she's like this. Therefore, these muscles are pretty much parallel. Stuff like that. Anatomy studies, anatomy lessons. All right, and here's the, the pit of her neck. It was way down there. Her chin. I'm going to draw. This is, and again, this is largely structural hairline, crown of, that is going to be, I'll tell you right now, that is going to be a trick. Okay, and then her, her, again, her, her uh, rib cage is turned very much at an angle. We're seeing more of the side of her rib cage than the front. So I'm just sketching in her rib cage there. And then here's her far shoulder. Do we have any, yeah, 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 good, we do. We have a clavicle collarbone right there. That's all, end of collarbone, you can barely see it. Here's her far deltoid bicep, comes all the way down to there. Breast there and there, waist there. Now her, and her hips come twisted. She's got a big twist in her waist, in her torso. So this box over here is whereas her chest her chest box so to speak her rib cage box is turned almost at a 45 degree angle her hips are almost straight on you know there's a whole bunch of things that I'm doing here uh, intuitively almost without without thinking which is of course where you want to get in your figure drawing so you can do all these measurements intuitively without having to uh, clutter up your conscious mind with analytical thinking for instance the how long is her neck how long is this rib cage box how long is this space her midriff if you will between the bottom of her rib cage and the top of her, how long is that all that stuff is coming out of me right now um, um, how long is that femur? That's the bone, the, the biggest bone in our body, you know. Again, now this one's coming toward us. And then her it, lower leg is twisted again. I'm toying with the idea, it's partly just for fun, um, I'm toying with the idea of um, starting, we'll see, starting um, the painting actually on the canvas with a charcoal sketch. Now, in other words, I, I'm, I'm trying to go the opposite direction of the kind of stuff I've been doing lately with my portraits using, using measuring devices you know, like all this kind of stuff. This, these tools are all two-dimensional tools, which is appropriate because we're working on a two-dimensional surface. Register, does that nod if you get that? Yeah, yeah, okay. But when we're doing people and portraits, we're most distinctly drawing three-dimensional objects on a two-dimensional surface. So there's kind of this little tug of war that should be happening inside your brain when you're when you're when you're doing um, a figure, because two-dimensional surface, three-dimensional reality, and whereas lately I've been focusing very much on two-dimensional tools, I thought, well, just for fun, since I've got a very unusual figure here, I will, um, I might start this painting. thinking three-dimensionality, thinking three-dimensionally rather than two-dimensionally, not using any, any devices of, uh, any two-dimensional devices, instead using my three-dimensional understanding of the human figure. Now, since I've got this here, I'm going to end this broadcast here very shortly. Um, hello, Stephen Stoll. Good to have you here. Thanks for speaking up. Hello, Light Blue. Good to see you again. Cylinder and a lot of angles. <laughs> That's exactly right. Let me, since I showed some of you, may, may have seen this, whoa, this book the other day. Whoa, this was bad. This was a bad mistake. 
um, um, I think I'm going to stop there. So this, this obviously I can't erase that. So this is a permanent part of this particular sketchbook. Let me take the, a moment to teach how to draw anything, but in particular, specific, how to draw human beings, how to draw or paint human beings. I've never heard anybody else say this, so I want you to hear me. <laughs> two, two, Sep separate and distinct, clearly identifiable skills, separate skills, not one, two. With me? Not if you got that. <laughs> Two separate and distinct skills are required for achieving any kind of proficiency at drawing anything, but especially the human figure. All right? Those two separate and distinct skills. See, this is what I don't hear, see, clearly enunciated. I've never heard anybody else say this. One is the power, the skill of observation. That's looking, 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 looking. I could describe this. If you ever, again, I, I, you can go to one of my drawing classes that is on YouTube, how to draw, drawing. And you can hear me talk about this. I talk about this for an hour and a half. I, I, how the brain works, or more specifically, how the brain must work in order to achieve the power of observation. Okay, so that's another whole subject, but that's already online. You can find it. Um, but that's one skill, the ability to look and see what you're looking at. The reason people can't draw, by the way, is because they literally cannot see what their eyeballs are pointed at. Now, I'm saying that with great passion because you have no idea how true that is. The reason people cannot draw well is because they cannot see. And you're going, that's stupid. Correct. That's what you think. Well, that's because you haven't listened to my drawing lesson. Um, but that's literally true. All right, so that's a skill that must be learned. It's not natural. Doesn't doesn't come natural to most great 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 99.9% .9 of the population cannot do it because their eyes are doing what they were created to do, which is keeping you alive. Keeping you alive and doing portraits are like two uh, anyway. All right. Skill number 1, the power of observation. That's what you hear when you take a, a university or college level art class and they put a model up there in front of the room and all the students stand around and say, and this professor says, now draw that. And the students are all like, <laughs> butchering the human figure. <laughs> Trust me. And then the professor, he or she, after the students have butchered, the professor says, oh, it's easy. Here's what you do. <laughs> this is the art professor's dirty little secret. And they say, it's easy, you go like this. So, you see this on YouTube all the time. And the students go, golly, how did she do that? How did he do that? All right. Well, the reason this, the professor did that, because he, he or she was pretending that he or she was doing observational skills, which they were, but there's this other skill that they didn't tell you about that they were using by the bucket loads. And that skill is you have to learn what the human figure looks like sort of by rote, by R-O-T-E is the word, rote memorization, rote memory. Remember back in ancient world people, we used to have to memorize stuff, Gettysburg Address or whatever. That was, it's called rote memory. When I was a little kid, we, had, we used to have, well, and a young adult, we used to memorize scripture verses, Bible verses, right? That was part of our good Christian cultures. You memorize by rote, R-O-T-E. Very, not enough of that going on, in my opinion, in the world today of memorizing, rote memorizing um, in the Western world. Anyway, uh, if you want to draw the human figure, sorry, no shortcut. You got to do your homework. You got to do rote, R-O-T-E, memory. You have to learn stuff. And when the art professor stands up there in front of the class and says, well, da, 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 what, what he or she typically is not indicating is kind of the way I do. I already know how long the femur is. If the head is this big, I don't even have to think about it. My hand draws the arms, the torso, the hips, everything intuitively without me hardly even 
forgive the grammar, without me hardly even thinking about it. <laughs> and um, it just so happens that this, this is my current anatomy book, and I just, first of all, the, the first several pages are, I did a live in front of a class teaching anatomy, but then here, halfway back, I start getting real specific. I'm preparing for, and I've shown, some of you might have seen me, seen this before, so I don't want to bore you, but, um, rote, uh, again, the word, <laughs> R-O-T-E, rote memory, figured, learning how to draw the figure, has a certain look about it, and, and th this is that look. Bunch of heads, couple eyes, bunch of mouths, shapes of nose, and analyzing the shapes of ears, memorizing, remembering. This has, a, this is like a swan. This is the letter Y. The ob is like, the earlobe is like a feed sack, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is my invention here. This is how to draw, how to remember. It's not how to draw, it's how to remember the shape of a human hip. I start with a bowl, I stretch it, I tip it, I spill it, I whack off the front, I push down the middle, I take a can opener and pry open better. I put some, okay, and I'm, I'm going so fast you can't possibly, but all of this is mnemonic device. All of this is tricks that I play with my students so that they can, when, the, when it's all said and done, they can draw these by memory. What good is that? Well, a number of this, these red marks down here are this, and this is what shows when you're drawing a human figure. Anyway, I'm not going to stop there. Again, male, male figure, male hips, female hips, and so on. Um, and, and again, I just, this is me preparing to teach. I'm teaching a 13-week class uh, this summer and fall, which I'm so excited about. Here's me drawing legs. Legs, 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 analyzing, using demonic devices. There's a candle here to reference to the, the main muscle down the front of the thigh. <laughs> More legs. Here's a, here's a bowling pin, and I turn it upside down and say this shape right here is very much like a bowling pin turned upside down. Here's different colors. Are you with me? So I, again, my, my point is not to show off, although I'm doing that too. <laughs> no, my point is to, to make the point that there are two separate and distinct skills. Blah, 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 blah. Ne'er the twain shall meet. Two separate skills in order to draw the human figure. Number one is look, 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 look. Learn how to see. Learn how to see the power of observation. You must nail down that skill. But the other will not come by doing that observation. This comes by analysis and memorization. So again, I'm just hoping that there's some young artist out there I'm still on. I'm still on legs, by the way. Now we transition. Now I'm up into the shoulder, uh, arms. See, all this is. Some of this is I found online. Some of it is my cleverness, if you will. My my take on all these things. Um, how to draw the arm. How to draw the arm. How to draw. I do hope to have a lot of this on my anatomy masters eventually. And and here I'm analyzing shoulders. Here it is. Uh, shoulder is the, the, the purpose of this primarily, and then there we are. All right, so that's all I'm going to say is um, that was enough, wasn't it? Um, again, I hope there's some young art student out there somewhere who will catch this video and go, oh, I have to do two things to get good at drawing or painting people. Got it? Two separate skills, the power of observation and rote memory. You have to, I'll call this one homework. For some reason, a lot of artists, they say, I, I, I don't understand that mindset, so I'm just going to ignore it. It's, it's fun to me, but I'm weird, can, admittedly. Um, so I hope that, hope that helps a little bit. Hello from Felipe from Brazil. Appreciate it. Good to have you here. Well, hello, Betty Funk. Good to have you. And Richard Tardell, I'm all done. Thanks for joining me, Richard, just in time for me to say goodbye. <laughs> Look forward to painting with you this fall. And, uh, oh, let me tell you, um, before we go then, I'm, I'm still not finished with this guy. And, and uh, I'm a little bit frustrated that I'm not finished. Bear with me just a minute while I make a horrible noise. <laughs> Woo! Um, I, 
uh, here's the photo, and there's something wrong with his face, and I couldn't tell what it was, and that's irritating. <laughs> that's me, irritated. <laughs> So somewhere around here, I lowered myself. I went all the way to the point, here we go, of, do you know this trick? I've, sh I've shown it to you many times before, a couple times before. These are the same size. I made this the same size as this, not, vice, not the other way around, but that's another story. I won't go into it. And then just uh, 45 minutes ago, I put a piece of plastic, taped it down, and very carefully traced it with a Sharpie marker. And then I can put this over here and find out if I have any dimensional errors. That is lines that are wrong. Now, if, if you, I'll start with that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but to some degree, I should feel pretty proud of myself it, to some degree. I believe it's not going to my head, but doggone it. That is almost an inch off the bottom of his ear. I'm going to add about a eighth of an inch to his hair up here. Um, I don't have this in the right place. Here we go. The, there was one tiny error, if you will, and it had to do, you can't even see this hardly, had to do with the top of his lip right here, right here. I have it coming over, uh, I have it going north, northeast a little too far. So I need to carve that down. All his teeth were in exactly the right place. And then the real line, the real issue, I think, is this line right here. So again, I got that from tracing and then superimposing that. You get it? So I'm, again, I'm going to stop this broadcast. I'm going to make these corrections. And um, if I bring you back in, it will, it will be to show you how to finish this little guy's face. This, I did this yesterday, and that was day three. Yesterday was the third layer on him. So today will be the fourth. And there's, there's very slight value corrections, uh, color corrections, but I, I love, this is all, as you can see, it's dry to the touch. A little bit of a drag, you know, a little bit of tackiness. So little that I'm not, I'm not smearing it, you understand? I won't go like this though and rub it. Anyway, I'm going to make some tiny changes and then I'll bring you guys back. I think I want to show you how I'm going to do this. What's it called? There's a name for that. I forget. Herringbone? No. Oh, I know the name, but I just forget that, that kind of fabric. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to fix him, shave off a 32nd of an inch off the top of his lip here. And then, uh, oh, and a tiny, I'm going to modify his collar a tiny bit, but that doesn't have anything to do with his likeness. All right. Thanks for joining me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Light blue will tell me what's wrong with it next time. <laughs> um, it is very possible, David, that the mouth is too dark. That's a, that's a classic, right? Right, right, right? Yep. So, and oh, the term I was using yesterday, I don't know if you were with me, was overdrawn. Not like my bank account, but drawn too much. Drawn too, too much contrast. Anyway, so that's a very good point. All right. That's all. I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks, guys, for watching.